So you probably clicked this video because YouTube recommended it to you based off the title and other metrics and also because of what is actually going on in the world right now or what recently happened with CrowdStrike. So if you're new here, I'm Day and I'm a cybersecurity engineer. I've been in the field for about five years now. I've worked various roles. My current role is a security response engineer at Amazon and I do a lot of incident response responding to various kinds of security issues and basically putting out fires, you know, every single day or every other day. In the past, I've worked at Datadog as a detective engineer i've worked in previous roles doing security operations security response all of those things and i've seen my fair share of incidents i say all that to say that in my about five years of experience in the security industry i've dealt with a good amount of incidents cybersecurity incidents caused by various things whether it's like malware or you know zero day vulnerabilities or abuse or you know insider threats i've dealt with a good amount of those things and what i've learned is that these things are bound to happen we can't control them happening we can't control people doing the right things we can't control certain things right we can definitely put measures in place we can definitely have preventative measures detective measures best practices <laughs> there are all these things right there are operating procedures there are job aids there are guidance on what you should do how you should write code pr properly how you should deploy things how you should use resources principle of least privilege there are all these frameworks but somehow in some ways something gets missed someone does the wrong thing someone decides to not follow operating procedures someone decides to approve a pull request they shouldn't have approved someone decides not to you know put tests in place like things happen that should not have happened that there are things in place to prevent them from happening but they still do happen essentially things that are supposed to happen or we expect that are not going to happen are bound to happen and i've just learned that during the incident you're like this wasn't supposed to happen but it happened anyway and now we have to fix it now we have to clean it up with CrowdStrike, I don't know, you know, internally what happened. At least we saw what happened with the blue screen of deaths, how that affected, you know, several different agencies, airlines, emergency services, companies, different things like that it had a really large scale effect. But in my experience, I have dealt with several issues that have also had similar large scale effects, right? They might not have completely crashed, you know, a bunch of computers like that, but they've left a lot of computers to be vulnerable, whether it's like Log4j, whether it's like various incidents that I've dealt with that I can't even talk about about they have affected you know things at a very large scale sometimes it's not even a security incident sometimes it's just like you know a service outage right they have large scale impact now this crowd strike incident might go down as one of the biggest ones in history you know if not the biggest one so far but at the core of it as someone who deals with things like this on the front lines i've had situations where there's an incident and i'm having to you know pull late, late nights early mornings you know spend long hours maybe sometimes weekends and when you're the one dealing with these incidents dealing with these situations the thing that comes to your mind is not is not not blaming someone it's not trying to put someone down for what they did for not following the procedure for not doing things according to the standard for not following x framework or y framework we're just trying to solve the issue we're just trying to like fix the issue remedy the problem there's a portion for lessons learned and lessons learned typically come last because we have to learn the lessons from what we're dealing with as an incident and make sure it doesn't happen again but in the moment we're just trying to contain we're trying to ensure that this doesn't spread further than it, that it, it already is the damage is done right with, with the crowd strike the damage was already done right but from what i saw there was very quick response in regards to containing the issue in regards to even at the point of containment trying to work towards eradication and remediation it wasn't a security issue in, in a certain type of perspective but thinking from an incident responder perspective they made the effort to try to contain it try to remediate it right it already happened we we're going to deal with it regardless like there's a repercussions of it you know flights delayed maybe even you know health repercussions for hospital systems but i personally feel like that point in time right it's it's not for us to start blaming to start pointing fingers to start you know essentially accusing you know someone or people of like what has happened it's like from what i've learned in technology in security in response is our goal is to clean up the mess and then after we clean up the mess we figure out why did this happen sometimes it's gross negligence and yes we we deal with that accordingly but if you truly understand the magnitude of having to respond to things at a large scale international whether it's from the crowd strike end of things or even from the different IT organizations or IT employees who have to deal with these things, you would know that no one would feel good knowing that they're pulling late nights and trying to work towards a solution and there are people out there making jest and you know making fun of the situation. I, as a, as a responder, if I was dealing with something super, super tedious and super, super sensitive, super high stakes, like I'm already stressed about what's going on, you know, it wouldn't do me any mental benefits to go online and see like people like poking fun at the situation everyone's different but i just wanted to bring a different perspective to how 
we as an industry, as individuals as well, respond to situations like this, they're bound to happen. I, I'm not predicting the future, but we're going to see outages and even security issues of this scale or even worse in the future. And the onus is on us to respond in a appropriate manner to the situations. Like I made a LinkedIn post on the day that it happened. Uh, I think the day after, because it kind of started like in the middle of the night or something like that. The whole premise of that post was that the one thing I've learned working in this industry, especially the way response responds, is something like this is always going to happen. And that's honestly literally why I have a job, why I'm is it a response engineer at Amazon. And regardless of that, times like this are super stressful for responders, whether or not it's a security incident. So the best thing you can do is just send positivity to anyone out there who's able to deal with the outage, especially going into the weekend. This happened on a Friday. People are going to be dealing with this on Saturday. Today's Saturday. I'm recording this video on Sunday. They're going to deal with the repercussions of this. Like when some things happen, like people are literally called physically into the office to try to remediate the issue. Like what if you're not close to an office? Like what do you have to, like there's so many things that are going to go on that are not going to be easy, that are going to be stressful for people. So the best thing we can do is just, you know, send some positivity their way, right? You know, the world is already as crazy as it is, as it is already. Like crazy things happen all, all, all the time. The best thing we can do is just like not try to like, you know, dig a deeper hole of negativity and just be positive. Like just, you know, encourage people. Like people have to deal with these things. So I just want to bring a different perspective to it. I'm not going to do go do a deep dive into whatever they did. I'm pretty sure Crosshack is going to post a postmortem of what happened. That's what any responsible company would do. Like I've seen outages like this. I've seen major security incidents, whatever the case is. And one of the best things I've seen as an industry is we know how to learn lessons from, you know, mistakes that we make. We put measures in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. These things are opportunities for, our, for us to learn about gaps in our processes, gaps in, you know, whether it's IT or security and, you know, help us just, you know, contain them, eradicate them and learn from them. There's a reason why lessons learned is the last part of a response life cycle because we have to make sure that this doesn't happen again. It's happened, right? We have to assess it. We have to contain it. We have to eradicate it. We have to remediate it and then finally learn from it. And I'm, you know, I'm not trying to advocate for CrowdStrike. I don't have any sort of like affiliation with them. Like it, it, I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, protect them or like speak for them. I'm just trying to come out there as, as someone constantly deals with incidents, large scale, small scale, and just put a different perspective. You know, I'm not analyzing the technical details of that. There are enough videos out there to do that. Just out here to say, you know, sending a word of encouragement to people out there who have to deal with this. And also people who had to face the repercussions of this, right? It's not never a great time when we have to deal with things like this, but the best that we could do is just be positive and offer support, help if need be. So that's my spiel. Thanks for watching. I don't have anything to sell you. If you care to look at any resources I have, look at the link in the description. And um, yeah, if you're dealing with this, all the best. And thanks for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video if you decide to subscribe. Bye-bye.